Okay, in last week's episode, <laughs> we uh, developed a basic staff GUI, which had a display button, and all the display button did was read a file and display data to the screen. Now, we didn't just read the data as text, or we did originally, but then we split the data up into name and phone number data items for each staff member. Okay, and that's useful to do that so that you've got access to the base data um, for searching and sorting and processing and, and doing things. Uh, it's much better to have access to the base data and so split the data up properly into name and phone number and any other fields you've got. So that's what we did last week or in last week's episode. Uh, let's move on with the next part, which is question four. This time when the program starts to run, the data file is automatically loaded and all the phone entries from the file are displayed in a text area. So that's step one. Okay, so we're going to load the file automatically at startup. And step two, the GUI has two extra buttons, one named Add, this is an Add button, and one named Save. When the Add button is clicked, an input dialog asks the user to input a name and a and similar input message dialog for obtaining the phone value. So we're going to use input dialogs to get the input from the user, which is a strange way to do it, but it is a little bit simpler than the alternatives. For example, putting text fields on your user interface and hiding those unless you're in add mode. Okay, so you've got to be careful when you start exposing controls in an interface. You can't let the user start adding data and then change to something else and change to something else because they might lose data. So you've got to be careful. So we're going to use swing input dialogues to get the data for this, which is much simpler or a little bit simpler anyway. Um, so that's the add button. The newly obtained data values have to be appended to the text area. Uh, now, we went further yes, in uh, last week's episode, and we used a, a, an array list to hold the data, which is an array list of staff data. So we're going to append it to the end of that array list. Uh, if the staff button is clicked, all data shown on the, in, in the text area is to be stored in a data file named staff home or staff phone. Uh, hint, you may need to use file read write. No kidding, of course we are. The clear button can be used to clear the contents of the text area. So there's three new buttons. The clear button, the add button, and the save button. Okay, so let's do the first thing, which is uh, make it so the file automatically reads and displays in the text area when we run the program. Okay, now get ready. This is really, really tricky. It's really complicated. So here's our constructor for our GUI. So what we want to do is, at the end of our, uh, at the end of the constructor, we want to call that method read file, and read the staff phone dot text. Okay, so it's going to read the file and add the text to the text area, and also add the data to the array list. So it's doing a bunch of things, but the, the bottom line is it's going to read the file and display it. Okay, so let's run that. <laughs> control one, control two. And there we go, the data's already displayed. Okay, so that was easy. That's the first one. <laughs> okay, so some of these things look difficult and often they turn out to be much simpler than you, than you think. Okay, uh, now we've got to add a, let's, let's add a clear button next. So we'll add a clear button, that's another easy one. So a clear button, that's just gonna clear the text area and it's also gonna clear our array list because we took that extra step and stored the data in an array list. Okay, so we need a button, copy, paste, clear button, clear. We want to add our new button to our user interface. We're going to add it to the flow panel, which is our bottom panel. Okay, that's our clear button done. And now we want to uh, make it so that something runs or code runs when we click it. So add, we'll copy that line there, add action listener. And we'll call a method called clear, clear data. Okay, that'll do, clear data. Could come up with a better name, but that's all, that's all we need for now. So clear data. So that method will automatically run when we click our clear button. Only one dot there, thank you. Okay, so clear data. Now we're going to have to just write a little bit of code to go in our clear data button and I'll pop it down here, public void clear data 
open and close braces so we're ready to go. So the three things we want to happen are clear our array list, clear our text area, and actually maybe there's only two things we want to do. So there's, there's how we clear our array list. So we'll go copy and paste. That's our array list clear. Now we just want to clear our text area and that's just a set text. Okay, so we've cleared our array list and cleared our text area. And that should be it. Control one, control two. Okay, there's our data read, read in. There's our clear button. When I click it, everything's cleared. Okay, so we're sort of doing a bit of a pincer movement here. We've, we've done the first bit and the last bit. Now we're going to sort of work out which one of these middle bits we want to do next. I'd suggest we probably tackle the save button next. That's probably the next easiest. Let's go with the easy things first, the things we can just focus on. So we'll do a save button. So back up the top to our GUI components and we'll create a button called a J button called save. Save button. Save. And we'll add it to our user interface. We'll add it to the just after the clear button. Okay, so they're adding, getting added to our flow panel, which is down the bottom, and the flow panel gets added to the border layout south region. Okay, so it's a, it's, a, it's a panel button down the bottom there. Okay, so save button, it's got to take the data out of the array list and save it to file. Okay, we don't want to just save the text area to file because the text area has got formatting in it, like tabs and things. We want to save it back to file in the same format it was written originally, which is our comma separated data, if you remember that. So there's our, that's what our file looked like originally. So we had spaces between the data because it was just one line per record. And now we want to write it back with spaces or commas between the data, sorry, commas. Okay. So save button. We want an add an action listener. Save file. Or write file if you're reading in writing it's probably the better word write write file and we'll give it a file name to write as well um, we're repeating that star phone dot text in a few places that would now be a good candidate to make a constant at the top of our program okay we might do that later on so um, any anytime you repeat variables or s strings or anything much much better to make them constant to be a program. Okay, so right file. We'll plonk it in here after the read. So we'll come down here after the read and public void right file. Okay, so our, our method takes a file name. Because that's what I decided to make a parameter. I could have made it a constant, just use a constant at the top of the program there, but I've made it this way now, so we're going to catch IO exception. That's something we're going to need, and that closing brace, we might as well grab it from our save method. Okay, uh, we're going to need our, our try, and that's probably pretty close to it. So we can scavenge bits and pieces. Okay, now there's many, many ways to write a file in Java, just like there is ways to read a file. I'll show you one way. It's probably the easiest way, but there's many other ways. And the easiest way is probably just to create a formatter object. Formatter out file equals new formatter. And then file name that we're going to pass in. Okay, so formatter is a, 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 a something we can write to. Okay, so we'll just write some code for now. Uh, and then, but the, now this, this line of code here can raise an exception. Okay, if the file cannot be created or if there's some sort of disk error or, or some sort of issue like that. So we've got to put that inside our try catch. Okay, try catch. And then what we need to do is loop through everything in our array list, all, all, all rows in our array list is less than and I'm just going to scroll up a bit to get our array list name again staff array list there it is staff array list dot size to get the size of the array list k plus plus 
This is a, sta a standard counter-controlled for loop. And then we want to do an out file, which is our formatter object, out file dot format. Inside quotes, percent %s, oops, s, comma, percent %s. And what we want to do now is pass in our two strings. So once the first string will go there, and the second string will go there. And we want to put the the, the staff member name in the first one. So it's array list dot get k to get that staff member at that location on the array list at that row of the array list dot get name to get their name. And the other bit of data we want to pass through is their phone number. So comma. Oops. Get phone. Okay, and that should be pretty close to it. So we're going to just loop through all records, all rows of our array list, and for each for each one, which is a staff member, we're going to get their name and get their phone number, and output them to the out file object, which is our formatter object. Okay, so we're almost done. It's that easy. Uh, now we need to close our file, so uh, let's just say our formatter object, out file, dot close. And that's it. That's all we need to do. Um, so again, we could catch various exceptions, you know, uh, file not found exception, no such element exception, all those sorts of things we could, we could be catching. We could have a catch for each one. I'm just keeping it simple here. I'm just doing... Uh, one catch. So if there's any sort of error that happens, all we can say is file, or we can fix that error message, could not be written. Oops. Okay, file could not be written. And for the, for, the, for the read file, which is our method up here, that's our read file method, I'll fix this error message as well. So uh, file could not be read. Uh, so the other thing you've got to think about as well with these exceptions, can your program resume? If you're reading in data and there's some sort of file error when you're reading data, can your program continue? And I'd suggest here that it's a pretty serious error. So perhaps what we should do is um, maybe even think about it, exiting. And when you exit, you can call system.exit. And generally the the the, the Standard way is to pass through a negative value, and negative value indicates an error. So what something can do that's called your program is it can interrogate the return value, and if it's negative, then there's an error. Okay, so we'll do that when the file read, and now we'll do it on the file write. Okay, maybe as well as that, we could Um, pop up a dialogue and maybe system out print line it as well. A good thing to do with error messages is display them everywhere. <laughs> okay, so that the user really knows about them. Here we're just setting it to a text area and exiting. So it's going to be gone before the user even sees it. But okay, maybe we'll take out this system exit for now. Just to get you thinking along those lines anyway. So maybe a dialogue would be better. And then we could exit because then, then we're sure the user's seen the error message. Let's, con let's compile that and run it. Control 1, Control 2. We haven't brought in an import for our formatter, and the import for formatter is um, so it's javautil.formatter import. We've got javautil there, let's grab that. Formatter. So you can save yourself writing by copy and paste quite a bit with these things. Control 1, and we're done. So let's now run our program, and there it is. And we'll click the save button and we're not sure whether the file was actually read or written or whatever because we're not displaying any messages here so maybe what we want to do is display some messages as well to the console screen just so we can see what's going on so we'll do that now it's a good idea to display messages as your program runs okay so in the in the reader down here we'll say system so i'm, I'm just below We've, we've, we've opened the file, we've read all the file, we've read all the lines from the file in, uh, we've closed the files, we've added the data to the array list, and we've appended a number of records read to our text area. We might as well just write that out as well. 
rabbit line and that looks like a pretty good bit of probably don't need that slash in on the bottom so we can display to the screen number of record threads so that will appear in a console window and down here in the file writer in the write file method we can display um, stuff array list dot size dot records written okay so we'll see some messages come out on the screen now when we run our methods so that's in the fourth the write file method control one control two so down here oh file could not be read okay so okay so i found what's going on um, i had a little tiny code missing in my uh, file writer method my write file and so it's put all the data on one line so that's why i couldn't read the file so i'll put everything back on multiple lines again so that's back how it was and i'll save it control s I'll go back to my my program over here and inside this percent %s, %s, I'll also put a new line character. So at the end of every record, it'll put out a new line inside the file. So every 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 row every record's on a new line, every staff member's on a new line. And that should be it. Control one, control two, there's our data getting read back in. Click the save button, three records written. Let's have a look at our file. So we'll just go across and have a look at our file and drag it in. And there it is. Okay, so everything's nice back, back how we expected. Okay, so that's good. Um, so that's file read and file write done. Okay, so let's look at our question again. We've done the clear. We've done the automatically display when we load. We've done the we've done the save, which is all this part down here. So we've done a fair whack of it. We just got the add to go. Okay, uh, and the add is the hardest part. Adding new records is the hardest part. So the, the question says use an input dialog, which I don't like because you don't want to bombard the user with input dialogs, but the question says it, so we'll do it that way for now. Okay, so we're going to use swing input dialogs to get user input. So we need an add button and uh, an, an add method so that we can run that when our button is clicked. And inside that add, add method, we want to pop up dialogs asking the user for phone number and name and then create a new staff object based on that and add that to our array, array list. So it sounds pretty simple, and it is really. We'll have a look at the code shortly. Okay, so I'm just scrolling up to add a new button, the add button. There it is, that's our add button. Uh, we want to add it to our panel. So where do you want to add it? That's what you got to think about now. Do you want the, because the the, with the flow panels, you can just add, add components in the order you want them. Do we want the add button first or the display button first? Probably the clear button third, I'm happy with that. Save button last, that's good. Maybe you want to swap the order of those two. And if you do, all you need to do is just move them in. There we go. So now the display button's first and then the add button. Doesn't really make much difference, I guess. Um, so we need to add a listener to our button. Add action listener. Add data. Okay, so add data. Probably a better name, add staff or whatever. I'll just call it add data for now. Okay, so we need an add data. We're going to add text data up there. But uh, add data. We can probably get rid of that add text data now or test data. That was just for testing. Um, Probably a private method. We probably don't want anything outside of the class calling this directly. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I want to make it private anyway. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is pop up some input dialogues for each um, bit of data we need, which is a phone number and a name. Okay, so we're going to pop up some swing dialogues, swing input dialogues. String name is equal to J option pane. Show input dialog. And then enter name. And another one for phone. Copy and paste. Phone. <clears throat> enter phone. Okay, so we've got our two dialogues there. Now, we've got no validation yet. 
So where should the validation go? Should it go here in this method where we're prompting for data? Or should it go up here in our constructor when we're creating staff objects? Now my view is that the validation should go where the data lives. So the staff class knows about the data, it owns the data, and the validation belongs inside this class. So maybe in the constructor, as certainly in the constructor, and if you've got any set methods or mutator methods, it would go in that as well to make sure the data is valid before you change any class fields. Okay, so for, for, for most things in the course, the staff are pretty lenient. You can put the validation in the, in the GUI class or in the, uh, the data class, but I reckon uh, it belongs in a data class to be te technically accurate because, or technically correct, because if somebody uses your staff class again in another project, they've got all the validation thrown in for free if you do it here. If it's in your GUI class, they can't use it. <laughs> okay, so it's much better going off in your in your data class. Where in this case, it's our staff class. So let's do some validation. If name dot length is zero, in other words, the name's blank. Uh, we want to do something else. We'll just copy that line again. Control C, Control V. If the phone length is zero, we want to do something else. Okay, so if the name is blank, we want to show show a message dialog. So it's J Option Pane dot show show message dialog null uh, name cannot be blank comma name error that's our title so that's the message that's going to be in the body of the dialog this is our title of the dialog and the last thing we need is our icon. And it's an error message. So we'll pop up an, an, an error icon into our dialog. Same for phone. Phone, can be blank? Okay, phone, phone error. Okay, so by doing our validation this way, if the name is blank, we get an error message. Else, otherwise, if the name's okay and the phone's blank, we get an error message. Okay. Otherwise, if everything's good, then we set our class data equal to the values passed in. No errors, everything's fine. Okay. Okay, so by doing the else if, you're not going to get bombarded with error messages. The last thing the user wants to see is 15 dialogues pop up okay it would it would frustrate them so we only display a maximum one dialogue we stop as soon as we get an error if the name is blank they get an error otherwise if the phone number is blank they get an error otherwise if everything's okay the class objects created properly okay so that's why you do your validation if else if else if else if else if do all your checks in else ifs and then eventually there'll be an else and that's where you run uh, you put your you, you put your code if everything's okay. All the checks have passed. Okay, so let's run that. That compiles okay. Let's just go down for a second to our add method. There's our add data method. So now we've got some validation. We can create a new class object, and it's staff new staff equals new probably. <laughs> I'll make it new person, so I'm not using new staff all everywhere. So staff new person equals new staff, and we're going to pass through the data to our constructor, which is our name and our phone number. Okay, so that's that happening. Um, and then what we want to do is add our new person into our array list. Okay, now we saw how to add data into our array list down here in the read method. And we created a new staff member, 
and then we added them to our array list. So we just copy that line of code there and copy it up above and paste. And maybe maybe new staff wasn't such a bad name, so I'll make it new staff again. <laughs> okay, I just didn't want to have staff, new staff equals new staff. I thought it was a bit much, but anyway, we've used it down below, so that's good enough for us. Okay, so now the, now the object, the new staff member, is added to our array list. We can put out a message to the screen as well. We might as well. Okay, so I've got a little message there at the end of our add method. New staff member added. Uh, now, whatever, how many records, actually, we don't have number of records there. It's dot size. I'll just wrap this onto the next line so it's a bit easy to read. Okay, so uh, staff member array list dot size to get the number of records, records. So I'll say new staff member added, now 15 records, for example. Okay, so we can keep track of how many are added. Um, that's pretty good. There's a few things we can fix and add and improve, but that'll do for now. Let's give it a test. Control 1, Control 2. Okay, so there's our array list. We can add, and we're going to enter a name, and I'll enter Mike O, and a phone number. Okay. We've got the message there, a new staff member has been added. There's now four records, but we haven't changed our display. So what's going on there? Let's look at our code again. We'll exit our program. We'll click the save button and save all the data. Four records written. So that, that indicates the, the, the data was added to the array list properly. We just forgot to refresh our text area. So let's have a look at the code. Now the code to refresh our text area, you might remember, was done when we read our file. And here it is here. Okay, so maybe what we want to do, because we want to do this when we read a file, we want to do it when we add a record, we want to maybe do it again when we delete a record, if we add a delete button later. So there's a whole lot of times we might want to refresh our text area. So what we want to do probably is remove this code there and put it in its own method so we can call it whenever we want. So I'll go, I'll select all that code and I'll go Control X. And then down here, I'll create a new method called a private method for sure. Don't want anything outside of the class calling this one directly. Uh, refresh text area or something like that. Okay, and I'll fix the indentation of these so they're all okay. And again, we don't have number of records anymore because it's a, 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 a local variable inside that method above. So I'll just use ArrayList.Size. Okay, uh, in fact, let's have a look at that number of records. We can probably get rid of that. I had that before we'd uh, started using ArrayList, so we'll, we'll get rid of that in our read file. Delete. We don't need to add one to it anymore. Delete. And... Get staff size. When we need it up here, we just go like that. Staff size records read. And get rid of that blank line. That's looking a bit better. Okay, so just recap on that. So we're now got a refresh text area method, which copies the data out of the array list into the text area and formats it. It's just a slash T between a tab between columns at the moment. But we could certainly make that better in the future and it depends on the number of records in the array list. So let's now call this refresh text area. We need to call it when we read the file, for example, for example here. Okay, inside our read file method, and we also need to read, uh, run that method when we add data. Okay, so now when we add data, 
we're also going to refresh your text area. Let's give that a try and see how we go. Control 1, Control 2. Okay, there's our data. Let's add a new record. Um, Fred Flintstone. And Fred's phone numbers. Something like that. And there they are, straight in our text area. And our number of records updated to five here. And also we see the message coming up here that there's now, oops, uh, there's a new staff member added, now five records. Okay, so everything's looking pretty good and everything works nicely. Now I'm gonna take a copy of our file, because we've got some data in there and I don't wanna lose it, so I'll take a copy, so I'll just drag and copy. Okay, and now I'll also test the clear function. So the clear function clears the array list and clears the text area, and let's save the data. And you'll see here it says zero records written. And now we should have a blank file. There's our file, star phone.txt, and it's zero kilobytes. If we drag that into, te into text pad, there's our file and it's empty. Okay, so that's working. That's working nicely. So I'm pretty sure we're pretty well finished now. We've got an add, a display, a clear, and a save, and everything's working great. Okay, so that's this cheat question well and truly done. We might just have a quick wrap of the, the question again. Um, so that's automatically reading the file and displaying it. We can tick that off. We've got a GUI with two extra buttons, add and save, and there's also a clear that they mentioned down here. When the add button's clicked, we prop up some input dialogues. We've done that. The newly obtained data values are to be entered to the text area. We went a bit beyond the call of duty there because we're adding them to a array list of staff objects, which is a much better design than just throwing data at a text area. Um, because we can search and sort it and all sorts of things later. We've got the save button here that saves the file and we've done the clear button. So we've certainly answered the whole question there. So that's well done. So I hope that was useful. Um, please work on this on your own and follow through the same steps I've followed in your own program and you'll understand things a lot better and you'll be able to apply it to your assignments and other projects. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope that was useful.